everything that I've done, I've now got to undo. And it's safe to say I am absolutely gutted. <laughs> Right, so we're two steps forward and one step back. We have an issue and it's safe to say I am absolutely gutted. I really thought we were making good progress and everything looked like it was going to head towards completion. But unfortunately guys, I have a problem with the scooter and I really need to fix it before I move on and do anything else. So uh, yeah. Let's take a look and see if we can fix this. So no luck whatsoever. I'm not sure what I'm looking at to be honest. Um, I'm waiting on some advice from a couple of guys. So weather's nice. I'm going to take this old girl out. Okay, so that was a well needed drive and a fill up for the 86. But I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about this issue with the scooter. So. Let's take another look at it. I'm sure this issue, and I'm aware it is, this issue existed before I started stripping the bike. I had a little short clip of me going up and down the uh, the yard when I first got it running, and I'll put the clip in here. And you can clearly see that when I go to brake, no brake light appears. So... I think I'm probably, well, I'm going to have to uh, remove this again and the back part. Might as well take the front panel back off uh, to get to the little block connector just to make sure everything's all good and that all the wires aren't damaged. But yeah, just have a poke and a prod with this and uh, yeah, let's try and figure this out. Right, so this is the following morning. I'll show you what mess we made. Okay, so this is the uh, the mess from last night. Now, I'm very lucky that I had a friend of mine, Chris, was popping down to the farm to pick up some tools. And he checked in on me, and uh, he's better at bikes than I am, especially when it comes to uh, electrical. So we checked the CDR unit with the original, checked the rectifier. And what we sort of found out why it wouldn't start, because initially the issue is the fact that I'm not getting any tail lights or brake lights, or even a headlight. Safe to say now that the uh, brake lights both work, so I know the brake light switches are good. Um, but I still have no tail light, and I have no headlight. But as far as I'm aware, the bike has to be running to get a headlight. So we got it running. No uh, clock lights either. But to prove that they at least work, so it wasn't just the bulbs... Um, we hot wired it with a bit of wire and we managed to prove that the dash lights do operate, the headlight operates and so does the tail light. So what we've established is it must be, or we're hoping it's the switch. Cause strangely we got the bike running on the button for the first time. So we know the starter works also. That was an issue with the starter relay, which is just here. We just gave it a couple of taps and it seemed to kick it into life. So the bike runs, which is amazing. But no lights. Indicators work, horn works, this starter works. But we can't seem to get the lights to go on. So I don't know how. I was very, very lucky. I have found a brand new old stock switch exactly like this from Honda for 20 quid so i've ordered it all the wires match up so i'm hoping we plug it straight into the the block here and it works i spent a bit of time cleaning this up yesterday also made sure all the contacts were clean i've made sure the plugs are nice and clean i've taken individually each one of these connectors out and i've used a little bit of sandpaper and make sure that all the bullet connectors are as clean as they could possibly be so at some point, I'm not going to bother now because I don't want to keep running it because I need to um, up jet it because it's running an 85 and I need at least 100. Otherwise, the cylinder head is going to run way too hot and there's a chance I could melt the piston. 
which obviously I do not want to do being a new kit. So, that's coming. I've ordered a new rectifier because it was only about 10, 15 quid. So yeah, new rectifier uh, also, just to make sure. We know that all the lights work. It is just not on the switch. So, earlier I was uh, extremely worried because I was staring at this for a good couple of hours and I did not know what to do. So I'm very lucky. I've got good friends that know what they're doing. And this is what we were following. So once again, this owner's manual I purchased has come in so handy. It's just unfortunate that a lot of the pictures are black and white. It, when it comes to wiring, it would be so much better if it was colour. But working back from the switch, if it's not that, I've also read up that it could possibly be the stator or like the alternator. So whether I can find one of these, if it is this that's gone, I'm, I don't know. Um, I hope it really isn't. But what I'm going to do now is check the plugs that lead or power this, which is this here, which on the bike is this bunch of cables. I'm going to take all the plugs out, give them a really good clean, inspect all the wires, and hope to find nothing really, and just hope that it is the switch. And then I can crack on with the panels, which is initially what I wanted to do, and have you guys seeing a completed scooter unfortunately i don't know if i can promise you that at this moment in time because i'm still waiting on parts and i still don't know if it's going to work but fingers crossed all goes well so just quickly run through what i've done we uh tested the original cdi and started the bike so we tried this one and it started i have cleaned up all these connectors took the bullet connectors out sanded them with a bit of sandpaper i'm yet to do this which i will do because this is um for the stator and i'm really hoping the stator isn't the issue because i've got to work my way back from the switch same with all these one by one pulled them apart cleaned them all up and they're now really clean this block here which is no longer available all cleaned with some electrical cleaner they're as clean as possible so the bike now starts lovely, as I mentioned. Hopefully it continues to do so. Pushing on with the rear end of the scooter, I have the panels fitting really nicely. And these two repairs here and here on the eyelet, they seem to be, uh, if it'll focus, there you go. They seem to be doing their job lovely. Nice little shape. And they seem to be holding the panel in where it should be. The wing is fitted. It's just pinched on with these two at the moment. So I know it's going to be where I want it to be. And I'm going to drill a hole about here. And the same the other side. Just here. To fix it nice and flush to the side panel. So not everyone runs a bolt. But the reason I'm going to is because of this. You can just see a slight gap. And by putting in a little bolt, that'll pinch that lovely and flat. And what I've actually purchased is some of these. So rubber rib nuts and some anodized green bolts. Thought that looked nice against the white as a little detail. So yeah, you just drill the hole to the size of uh, this, which I think is about 10 mil by the looks of it. And as you tighten the bolt, the rubber pulls back and clamps itself into the panel. And I'd much prefer that than using the metal type, because I've got a feeling it might crack the panel, whereas this may be a little bit more delicate. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to try it, and hopefully it works. And whilst the seat is still off, you can see in here how I fitted the choke. And as mentioned previously, this is where Benny has positioned his, which is a brilliant, brilliant position because you can easily just turn it on and turn it off. 
put the seat back down, off you go. So yeah, thanks for that mate, that's a really good suggestion to be fair. So yeah, let's crack on, let's get this uh, wing attached. There you go guys, just a little two and a half mil hole drilled at the moment, just to make sure I've lined it up correctly. Now what I'll do is I'll drill a five mil hole, because that is the size bolt that I've bought to uh, secure this. There you go, one, two. So that should be nice and secure. It seems relatively secure on these two here, but uh, I don't really want to take the risk. And I know, well, this obviously will hold it down also, but I'm just worried of vibration. If it was to ever come off, I don't really want to have to lose it and risk it being damaged with all the effort I'm going to be putting into it to paint it, etc. So for the sake of a couple of M5 bolts, it'd be a nice little detail. I know for a fact it won't be going anywhere. So in theory, I can prep this for paint, get it in its white, because that is just its gel coat color. And that's the spoiler done. So I've brought the seat outside, just started masking and painting the inner edge. I'm really happy actually with the color match. It does show it slightly darker on camera because it is starting to uh, cloud up a little bit. But I thought I'd do the inside edge. This is the product I'm using. This is the colour. As you can see, it's good for vinyl and leather. Hopefully this little can will be enough to do the whole seat. But yeah, going to let this dry a little bit. I'm happy with the colour match. I've cleaned it all off, just used some dish soap and some warm water, so it should be as clean as possible. So yeah, I'll start painting this and hopefully it comes out nice. And there you go, just like that we have ourselves a green seat. You wouldn't even think that I just painted it <laughs> with this stuff. And one can, as you can hear, it's completely empty. One can was just enough. It's a shame the camera can't quite pick up the correct shade. It's a little bit lighter than this. It matches so well to everything else that I've done. You can see here look, that you can't even see where it said Honda once before. So yeah, hopefully it works. Otherwise, this is the stuff I used. And uh, yeah, obviously extremely easy to apply. And hopefully it lasts and doesn't crack. So I'm going to make sure this uh, cures properly. But yeah, really happy with the result of that. Okay, so I'm just in the process of making a little template. Because what I'm going to do is actually make a little mat for this. And that's mainly really just to protect the paint on this. I don't really want to wear down the paint getting on and off the scooter. I want to try and keep it as clean as possible for when I take it to shows. So yeah, just going to do half. And then once I know that this is correct, I'm just going to flip it over. I've marked the centre line here so I know the right width to make it. So yeah, just need to make two of these, cut it out on the mat and then find a way of securing it and at least then that's removable. So uh, yeah, as I said, I don't damage all this paintwork. And this is what I'm going for. So it's just some rubber matting. I could either go for the checkered plate or what I'll most likely go for is, believe it or not, the underside, once it's all cleaned up. But I've got a choice either way, because it will be reversible. So yeah, got to carefully peel this off, lay it down, and then cut it out. Here we are then, guys. It's all fitted. It's not absolutely perfect. The mat was um, 14 inches width and I needed a little bit more if I was to get it to fit absolutely perfect within this ridge here. But it's the same both sides. But it's on. And it just protects the paint underneath. So really happy with that. And it doesn't look too bad. Right, so I've got some bits, which means hopefully I can finally get this front end rebuilt for the second time, 
But yeah, let me show you what's arrived. Right, so we have our new old stock start button light switch. So I was very lucky to find this. This is off a chap off eBay and he just deals in old motorcycle parts for all sorts, not just Hondas. But this is exactly the same as the one that is on the scooter. Now, I was very lucky that John next door, his friend Alex, very clued up on motorcycles. And he tested quite a few electrical bits and pieces for me. One of which was this switch. And he did have it apart. He took the back off and checked the contacts. As far as he's aware, it actually works fine. But by then, I had already ordered this. And because this is brand new, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to fit this. So if anyone does need a spare, as far as we're aware, this is all good. And I'm going to collect all the parts that I've removed. And uh, yeah, if I can help anyone out with their project, I'm more than happy to do so. A new rectifier. Once again, don't really think it's needed. From what we've tested on the bike, all works well. But once again, by then, I had already ordered this. And it was only a couple of quid. So I'll probably get this fitted. And even though you're not going to see it, it's finished in a nice anodized black finish. So yeah, rectifier. And these. This is what I needed to allow the engine not to run so hot. So I've separated the four jets out of this big kit that I require. I think the smallest is 100 and the largest is 108 out of these four. This set was 10 quid off Amazon. And they start from, I think, 60 or 65 all the way up to the 108. So I can get that in because I need the engine to run for me to test the lights. So I'll remove this switch, get this one fitted, get all of this put back on the front, and hopefully all works well. Just show you a quick comparison. So this is the new switch. And this is the old. It's exactly the same. Button's a little bit faded. The numbers on the side are different. I'm not actually quite sure what they reference because side by side, they are absolutely identical. Even the plug, so we have this one here, green, brown, which are together. And then we have one space at the end before it's the yellow and orange, two spaces, and then a yellow. This one also is green and brown, one space at the end, green and or uh, sorry, yellow and orange, two spaces and a yellow. So I'm confident that this is exactly the same. So yeah, let's get this one in. Here we are the guys out in the sunshine for the first time. Now this isn't quite the final form I promised you guys in the previous video, but this is as far as I can go at the moment. I'm currently trying to test fit this belly pan, hoping that it'd fit pretty snug. And unfortunately, it's just not going on well. So this is gonna take quite some time to get right. A little bit of cutting, a little bit of fiberglass, because I have tried ordering another one and they are impossible to get hold of at the moment. I'm unsure why. So I'm going to have to make this one work. Same with the spoiler. I'm yet to paint that and also these rear panels. But if you guys were to squint and, and get the idea of the whole rear end being in white with the belly pan on and secured correctly, you get the idea. And it looks great. It's come a long way. I'm really happy with the result. If you have a look around here, you see how wide it fits and how tight it is on the front. So yeah, it's gonna take a bit of work, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. 
But here it is, guys. You can get the idea of how the scooter will look in its completed state. And I'm in contact with someone currently with regards of the uh, stickers. So hopefully that goes well and we can come up with a design and get those installed. And this thing will start to look really, really clean. So there you are then guys, I really hope you can get the idea of when the scooter is going to be complete and all painted up with everything fitting correctly. I would have loved to have had this a little bit further in this video but with those little electrical gremlins that I've come across and also now realising that this belly pan is going to take that little bit more work than expected, it's going to take that little bit longer but it'll all be worth it in the end. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I really hope to catch you in the next one.